start off, tell me about your work at IPFRI and how is this related to the global climate change agenda? Okay, uh, so I'm Mark Rosegrant. I'm the director of the Environment and Production Technology Division at IPFRI. And our work really is, has major implications for climate change. So we, we're, we do long-term assessments of the impact of climate on agriculture uh, and adaptation and mitigation options as well. We're also now looking at how what happens in agriculture uh, influences the whole economy. So we can look at the impacts on employment, income outside of agriculture as well. So we can get a very comprehensive picture of the impacts of climate change and then assessing the, the policies to adapt to climate change or to help mitigate it as well. Okay. And uh, for a long time there's been some criticism that there's so much focus um, on adaptation and a lot less on mitigation and I think agriculture is a big component in that. Kind of talk about uh, how that's evolving and what you've seen in the COP22 versus COP21 on yeah, this. Yeah, so yeah, I think that's a great point and I think we're, we're moving a little bit in the right direction here at the, at the COP22. Uh, towards uh, looking at, uh, at the other agendas. And we're doing the same in our work. For, you know, for a while it was very hard to actually get good enough estimates of what certain types of agricultural practices mean for greenhouse gas emissions, or some, for example. But now there's a lot more evidence and, and we're actually doing specific analyses of those so that if you get certain kinds of agricultural technologies in place in the long run, what is the impact on greenhouse gas emissions? How can different policies like carbon taxes or how can investments in research that help mitigate drought or stress uh, other stress tolerances, how can that influence uh, mitigation as well? So it's very, it, it, we're tr trying to move towards that kind of balanced agenda also. Tell us how agriculture fits in this big picture of our sustainable development goals as well as COP and climate change. To me, it looks like we, we can't really uh, slow green, uh, climate change enough unless we seriously uh, put into place mitigation activities in agriculture. From the work we're doing and some other work I've seen recently, it looks to me the livestock sector may be the one where the, the biggest gains can be made in reducing uh, emissions through new practices, more efficient feeding and so forth. And there's where we have to also consider things that in general aren't that popular, looking possibly even at taxes uh, uh, on, on meat products, you know, if we can't do, do some reduction in the growth of, of meat, meat uh, demand. Uh, due to, in a sense, education programs and, and so forth as well. We also have to remember though in, in developing countries, particularly in Africa, meat consumption is very low, uh, two or three kilograms per person. And there, it's increasing meat consumption is a good thing because it's, it's helping increase protein and other micronutrients. But we really have to focus on, on the richer OECD countries, and now including China and Brazil as well. Sure. And uh, can you talk a bit about your session today? It's about informing policy landscapes to fight against climate change and hunger. Tell me a bit about what, what is your takeaway message for, for people who perhaps can't attend today? What yeah. are they expecting to hear? I think some of the key points is you, we have, you have to, from the start, involve your stakeholders. So you're not just out there, oh, I've got an exciting model, I'm going to put it in and do this kind of assessment. So you have to identify the questions carefully, design the analysis so it actually uh, provides some types of answers, or if not answers, informs the kinds of issues that are there. And so what we're doing there is trying to make our analyses more accessible in ways that think can lead to impact. And why did you decide to participate in uh, the Global Landscapes Forum today? You know, what, what is your expectations out of this and why did you choose this specific platform? This seemed to us is, is in a sense, the most, the best place uh, that around COP to actually get our messages across and to interact with people uh, who share our values and our approaches. For me, it's also very interesting that I don't always I don't work personally on a lot of the topics that you see here at GLF. So some of the landscape approaches uh, I'm not as familiar with as you or many others would be. So I'm learning from being able to interact with people of different disciplines, different ways of working, uh, and and also with not just research institutions but grassroots NGOs and government agencies and so forth. So GLF has this great diversity uh, and strong messages coming out that that I find very valuable.